Good afternoon, everybody. It's so nice to be back with you again. I'm going to be starting uh, today to try to ramp up some of these uh, case reports that I give you because I've had a feedback from a lot of you that you really enjoy hearing about real life cases. And today's case is about an interesting couple that I spoke to a week ago. I've called them Marissa and Pete. Obviously, that's not their right names but it's to protect their confidentiality and their right to privacy, of course. Now, Marissa was 39 years of age when I spoke with her. Pete was 43. The couple consulted me because they were interested in having a baby after a very long period of disappointment. Firstly, let me say that it wasn't all bad for them because they'd been pregnant before and they'd achieved two pregnancies and had two babies. But that was three or four years ago, and they'd been trying ever since then to have a baby. When I inquired as to the background of the problem, it was clear that Marissa's second child, uh, when it was born, had been associated, or that birth had been associated with complications. After birth of the baby, it was a normal vaginal birth, the placenta was at first retained. The doctor attempted to apply traction to the cord to bring the placenta out. And in the process, part of the placenta remained behind. This led to her bleeding furiously after the birth of the child. And the doctor had to go in manually and try to scoop out the placenta, which he attempted to do and felt comfortable upon removing the part of the placenta that remained attached in the uterus, that the job had been completed satisfactorily. But alas, that wasn't the case, because a few weeks later, Marissa was thwarted with problems of a foul-smelling, malodorous, what we call lochia or vaginal discharge. It's normal for people to have secretions from the vagina after the birth of the child for a week or 10 days, but this gets progressively less and doesn't smell bad. But in Marissa's case, it got more and more, it became a little bit stained and discolored, smelt badly, and she was experiencing a low-grade fever and lower abdominal pain. She presented to her doctor, who took a look at her, and felt like there were some products of conception left behind. He attempted to do a DNC and clean out the uterus. Unfortunately, this had taken a few weeks to get to this point. And he didn't get all of it out because a few months later, uh, even though Marissa noticed that her periods had returned to normal, and, uh, but they were much, much lighter. There was much more scanty bleeding. Her symptoms had abated, but her periods had gotten lighter. She tested her ovulation at home and found that she'd been ovulating, that she was ovulating normally. And so she and Pete went at it and tried to have another baby. After three or four years of trying regularly, remember they had no problem previously, uh, she was unable to get pregnant. So she sought the assistance of a fertility specialist in her area. The doctor appropriately did an ultrasound didn't see anything obvious, and so I booked Marissa for a hysteroscopy, where a thin telescope-like instrument is passed into the uterus from below, with the woman asleep, fluid is injected, sterile saline solution, and the uterus is inflated, and the doctor can really look carefully inside, almost like scuba diving, looking inside the uterus to see if there was anything wrong. And what did he see? There was scarring inside the uterus. There were adhesions that were binding the walls of the uterus together. We call these synechiae. These were quite thick. And the condition that she had, where such fusion of the uterus takes place, reducing menstrual flow and making the uterus inhospitable to an embryo, we call it Asherman syndrome. Asherman syndrome. At the time that he was looking, he went in with and resected the scar tissue, did a good job of it, cleaned out the uterus completely, so that three or four months later, when he went back to look again, the uterus had been restored to its normal contour inside. 
In fact, it looked beautiful. And he said to her, you guys can try and have a baby on your own now. But, and they did. But they were unable to achieve a pregnancy. And the flow of, of menstruation did not increase dramatically. She went back to the fertility doctor who said, it's time for us to consider in vitro fertilization. And she went through a cycle of in vitro fertilization where she responded very well because she had normal ovarian reserve and she responded to a modest stimulation and she produced 17 follicles, 14 eggs and this narrowed down to the point that she had about four or five blastocysts which tested normal by pre-implantation genetic screening and were found to be of very good quality. They were frozen and stored. At this point, they start to get ready to do what's called a frozen embryo transfer or an FET, and the doctor put her on estrogen therapy to build up a lining, but no, no deal. The lining wouldn't thicken above 6.5 or 7 millimeters. So he increased the dosage of estrogen and even gave her an anti-prostaglandin in the form of aspirin which works well with estrogen usually, but still no lining improvement. He then canceled the cycle each time because he wasn't going to transfer an embryo to a uterus that had an insufficient lining. And he came back and did a second stimulation, this another stimulation with hormones, this time using skin patches. Still no improvement. He moved on to using injectable estrogen and vaginal suppositories of estrogen. Still no improvement. The lining remained around seven millimeters, totally inadequate. They'd been through three or four attempts. So at this point, she contacted me to ask me if there's anything I could do. She was aware of the fact that I'd introduced vaginal Viagra as a treatment to improve the uterine lining. Vaginal Viagra works as it does in the male by improving blood flow. So when you put the suppository of specially prepared suppository into the vagina, it is absorbed immediately into the uterus and improves blood flow through the uterine wall. This carries more estrogen to the lining. The objective is to deliver more estrogen in this way and improve the lining. The thesis being that many cases of failed lining thickening is due to inadequate blood flow. Usually this occurs in older women or women who've got fibroids or in women who for no reason, just as they get older, have reduced uh, blood flow. And Viagra suppositories in 75 to 80% of such cases will improve the lining and Result in, an, result in an excellent thickening and you can go ahead and achieve pregnancies. We were the first to describe this in the 90s and hundreds and hundreds of women have had babies whereas before it was impossible because the lining was too thin to allow the roots of the embryo to take hold properly and you cannot plant a seed on bedrock. So this is what she wanted to hear about and in her case it was also a question of poor blood flow, but unfortunately, when it comes to postpartum infection due to retention of the process of conception, as was the case with her, the innermost lining, the innermost layer of the lining called the basal or germinal endometrium is destroyed by scarring. And when that happens, it doesn't matter what you do. You can give Viagra, you can pray. It's not going to improve the thickness of the lining in most cases. So we sat down and discussed it. And I said to her, look, I'm prepared to try to see whether the Viagra therapy will improve your lining, but I don't expect it to work. And so it was that when we did a therapeutic trial of Viagra, her lining did not improve. And there was no other resort for her, no other option but to consider gestational surrogacy. And that's where I left her. She is now consulting with an agency that provides gestational carriers to women so that she can have 
a better chance of having a baby with a surrogate. I'm convinced she'll be successful in having another baby or two from the four normal blastocysts that are left behind. So that's where she is at this particular point. The lining has to be at least eight millimeters in thickness to support an implanting embryo. Ideally, you want it over nine millimeters, but at seven millimeters, you haven't got a shot. And I will never tra would never transfer embryos to a uterine lining that thin because you're going to fail every time. So Marissa and Pete have been put in touch with an agency that provides gestational carriers. And they will make a decision as to how they want to proceed in the future. Now, just before I leave you, most of you by now know that I've established Sure Fertility Solutions. And I'm speaking to people every single day from 40 different countries, people that are spinning their wheels with problems that are intractable and helping them find solutions to their problems. I invite you to give a call or to contact us through the website. My assistant's name is Patty Converse. You can reach Patty by calling her directly at 702-533-2691 and she'll set you up with a Skype consultation which is, lasts about an hour. In advance thereof, she'll ask you to fill in a detailed questionnaire and also to send as many of your records as you have available. We can always get the rest of them later. But whatever's available to send to us, I will then spend an hour in advance of that consultation preparing and then speak with you and give you my advice. And that will be followed up, if need be, by a follow-up consultation to discuss where to go once we get additional information as needed. You can call Paddy directly at that number or if you live in Canada or the United States, you can call the 800 number, which is 800 7407437 and Patty will walk you through the process, send you the questionnaire and set you up for a consultation with me. Alternatively, you can go to my website shareivf.com shereivf.com You'll find an enrollment form on the website. Fill that in and click and submit it. It'll go to Patty. Be sure to put down your cell phone number so she can call you back and if you have difficulty in filling in the questionnaire that she will send you she will always handhold you through the process if need be all you need to do is call her through one of the numbers i gave you you can also email patty directly and her email address is concierge c-o-n-c-i-e-r-g-e c-o-n-c-i-e-r-g-e at shareivf.com, concierge at shareivf.com, and just ask her to call you or to contact you and send you a questionnaire, and she'll do so and set you up for a consultation with me. I really look forward to the opportunity of helping you if you're interested. Thank you for attending today. I'll try to do this more frequently, and we'll start by doing another one next week again. God bless, and have a wonderful evening.